tactile cue is essentially what it says on the tin. It is a cue that is tactile. That's it. That could consist of, I don't know, you have a, a shoulder that dislocates very easily. So your practitioner puts their hands on your shoulder, helps to just glide the movement. That's a tactile cue because as soon as that practitioner puts their hand on your shoulder, those little mechanoreceptors, things that detect pressure and deformation of skin, stretch, things like that, they're going straight to your brain. So if it's the right shoulder you get hit on, it's going straight to your, the left hemisphere. And it lights that part of your brain up and it immediately connects this part of your brain that's dedicated to your shoulder with the physical body part. It's one of the reasons why if you're stood in a queue and somebody taps your shoulder, you look at the shoulder they tapped on, you don't look at your foot or you know, look at your armpit or something like that. It's a tactile cue. So there are different ways to use tactile cues. If you're doing, say, loaded knee flexion, your practitioner might have used their hands to hold your joint to help you connect better to that joint. But what you probably will have found, they'll have used the tactile cue band to just make it a lot easier and to increase how kind of effective it is. So if I jump on in, one of the reasons why I love tactile cues, and it's not just the fact that they're super cheap. I've had this band for like over 10 years, okay? But it's not just the fact that they're cheap and easy to do. It's the fact that you can do them anywhere. You literally take this on holiday with you. And keep in mind, you don't need to be super vigilant and super diligent when you keep it on top of your maps, okay? You don't need to go to the extents of taking this on holiday with you. But if you did, you could, okay? So one of the reasons I really like tactile cues with the band is the fact that not only is the band hugging the back of my knee and the outside and inside of my knee, it's like, it's like somebody's holding my knee. So that's firing straight up, getting processed by my brain. And more importantly, I'm connected to that knee now. Okay, so it means the chances of me sublux and dislocating it go whew, down the you know really really low now. More importantly, though, if I was to relax, the band will pull my leg. So it means not only am I having a tactile cue that's telling my brain where the knee is, I'm also having an external force pull me into a position I'm not supposed to be in, which is good because those signals will go to my brain. They will say, "Look, we're being pulled on." And your brain will go, you're not supposed to be being pulled on. Okay, I'm going to give more power. I'm going to recruit more muscle fibers in this area to help fight whatever's pulling us out. So not only do you know where the joint is, you could also contract the muscle fibers more than you could without the band. So it means you're even stronger. Okay. If you're doing an isometric loading exercise, so you, maybe you go down and you just hold. Okay. The safest exercise of all because essentially no joints are moving. It's really hard to dislocate the joint if the joint doesn't move, but we're still working the muscle. But with all exercises, repetition is key when it comes to mapping and speed. It makes no sense. You just blast them through the exercise. When you're using your tactile cues, go slow, okay? Really slow. Start off at the very kind of end range, uh, sorry, the very kind of closed off range of movement. So up here, I'm in full extension. Now I'm flexing, now I'm extending. I'm just going tiny. I'm not really moving a great deal, but then I can go a bit lower. I could even move this foot further out. We want to work it. And more importantly, it's about speed. Okay. Speed is important because you need to give your brain a chance to update. You need to give it a chance to figure out what's going on. Okay. So when you're doing your tactile cues, do them slowly. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on contracting the right things, okay? So if I was doing that exercise, pulling my leg back, okay? Yeah, I'm loading, I'm going up and down, but what I'm focusing on is pulling the band back using my knee. Extension, flexion, extension, flexion. What you find as well when you're banded, it is really hard to hyperextend your knees. Really hard because your brain knows exactly where the joint is, so it's not gonna push into that super hypermobile range. But that's just one of the reasons why I love tactile cues. But tactile cues are not just about your lower body, you can do them for pretty much any body part. But in summary, tactile cues, very easy to do. All you really need is your red band or something tactile, some, somebody can touch you, you could even touch yourself, okay? But do them slowly, do them with purpose. Contract the muscles you're supposed to be doing and repetition, okay? If you do 10, 10 reps twice of 
loaded knee extension tack tack you it's not going to do anything okay you need high reps you need to be aiming for like 30 to 50 reps okay it needs to be repetitive there is nothing more a brain loves and you'll find this when you get into predictive coding part than predictability routine the same stimulus you probably find that a lot of people with high mobility or eds will stim they'll have certain things where it might be clicking might be tapping might be leg shaking thing is when we get it in uncomfortable situations and there's lots of input coming in people talking things going on it's a lot for our brain to process so what we'll essentially do is do something rhythmic and it gives us that repeatable regular routine sensory input helps to calm our system down okay but as far as tac tac 2 goes slow strong okay higher end reps with all mapping exercises repetition is king